ओके सो विल स्टार्ट विथ अ रेस टुडे एंड विल ट्राई टू कवर क्लासेस एंड ऑब्जेक्ट्स एज वेल सो बेसिकली एज ऑफ नाउ यू हैव सीन द डेटा टाइप and the primitive data types you are aware about the primitive data types like int float double uh, boolean char so there were like eight primitive data types so uh, byte int sort long uh, float double char and boolean right so uh, we will go ahead and see the concept of arrays now so what basically an array is so sometimes you might feel the need to like store a number of integer variables or a number of string variables or a number of float variables in a single data uh, in, in some single variable so what i mean by that let me try to create a new package so i have created one main method and as of now you have seen like you can create some uh variable and you can like assign those a uh, some value similarly you can assign you can create some float variable you have seen these things right so you are already aware of this now what happens if you want like 10 numbers 10 integer values in a single variable so what you basically do is you need an array for that so that an array is basically contiguous memory blocks which contains your numbers so if i show you an example something like this so let me try to create an integer array so the syntax is basically let me syntax of array syntax of array is basically data type space followed by uh, square brackets and then reference variable name or reference variable you can say this and then we need to use a new operator so basically new is a java keyword we'll use it uh, to further create objects as well in java for now we are creating an array and again we need to specify the same data type which we had used for uh so suppose i want to like create an integer array so it would be the same data type here and here and then i would specify the size of array so it will be more clear when i demonstrate this with an example suppose i have something like array equal to new and so this is basically if i want to like store 10 numbers in this array we'll give specify the sizes 10 now how do you basically assign value to all this uh, indexes so the size of this array is basically 10 and what you can basically do is like the indexes of an array will start from 0 not from 
so it will be like array of 0 array of 1 array of 2 until array of 9 so you can assign values like this array of 0 is equal to 10 array of 2 is equal to 15 and what do you think will be assigned? Suppose I have not assigned values to other indexes. Like I have not assigned value to array of index 1 and then array of index 9. So what do you think will be the value of those? Suppose I print this array of 0. What do you think what would be the output? What would basically array of zero give? Everyone there? What did I say, right? So I... uh, what will this print array of zero? Line number 15, what will this print? I would say zero there. Right? No, yeah. uh, it, it, it's very clear, right? I have, see, I have created an array of size 10. Is it fine? I've created an array of size 10, which holds 10 integer numbers. And at index 0, I've assigned a value of 10. At index 2, yeah. I've assigned a value of 15. So if I go ahead and print the uh, uh, value at array index 0, what is it supposed to print? print is 10 yeah it is it, yeah that's what i was asking so it will print 10 but if i go ahead and try to print array of 10 what will it print any idea uh, there is just zero start the zero mean index yes. on one yeah. uh, no it's not index of one it is in sorry uh, it, let's me give you index of uh, array of nine what will this print or index of five, oh, anything. Oh, is it index five? You have to, 10 is, I mean, zero is 10. Where we, yeah, um, see, there are like 10 indexes now, right? So we basically created something like this. Suppose at index, Z zero we are basically storing 10 right then yes. then there is something like at index one what will be stored at index one i have not initialized any i have not stored anything as of now right so basically this will if i don't store anything at the index it will store the default value what integer has so integer has default value of zero right we had seen these things when we were like covering uh, data types. So integer has a default value of zero. So it will store zero at this position. And then again, at index two, I have stored 15. And then again, zero, 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 zero. So how much is it? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Got it? So 10 is at index zero. Zero. And then at index one, I have not stored anything. So this is supposed to be zero. At index two, I have stored 15. So this will be 15. And then again at index three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine everything will be zero so if i go ahead and print this array of five it is supposed to be zero let me try see you can see those values right the first print statement provided me 10 the second print statement provided me zero you're getting it 
similarly i can create a double array this is yeah for yeah uh, system out yeah when we print uh, that is uh, based on the index 5 is 0 but yeah yeah you so, know number it, 5 the value of number 5 int value is equal to 15 and float new value uh 2.0 f yeah yeah so yeah. so uh one second so basically the syntax is array of we provide some index this is the index and then we provide some value so this is kind of what i'm doing so let me tr oh, you're uh, talking about when we create something else some other uh, uh, array hello before that said uh, you know the syntax of array so data type that is int integer we can say and also a uh, reference variable arrays if as a variable is are we use this sorry i did not get your question uh, number uh nine syntax okay. of array syntax of array so data type so do you want to array. print do you want to print array of index nine no, 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 no. Then uh, I'm talking about from the syntax, syntax of array. Oh, syntax of array? Yeah. Uh, yes, array, syntax of array uh, number nine. This number nine, data type. Okay, so you can provide any size here. Is it what you're speaking? Means you want to specify the size as nine here? No, you're, you're writing, you're writing number nine. You're writing a number nine, right? On the top. Uh, can you specify at line number, which line number you're speaking? Nine, data nine. type, data type array reference variable is equal to new data type size of array. Yes. So what is the issue in that? So based on that, based on that, uh, what I'm saying, uh, reference variable array is, Yes. Yeah, array new is a reference data variable. Type. Yeah, where is new data type? No, no, new is a Java keyword. No, no, new is a Java keyword. This is a, okay, I think you got confused. It's not new data type. New is basically a Java keyword. It is a Java keyword. It has got special meaning in Java. It's not new data type, means data type will be this data type would be same as what you declare here so basically this data type and this data type will be same new is basically a java keyword got it this new keyword is very special in java this keyword will be basically used for creating an object in java it will be used for creating arrays as well in java got it it's not like new data type it means new is a java keyword used for creating arrays comma objects yeah someone wrote in the chat as well new is a java keyword which creates an object got it is it clear now yes sir i think you had some confusion right If not, I'll no, explain more. Okay, we can go on no. no, no. Uh, did you understand? Because this is very important. Y yes, I understand for uh, new is a keyword of the Java and yeah, yeah. creating. Yes, so yes. Object. New is a Java keyword used for creating arrays, objects. So it's for that. So but similarly. My question, my question, uh, now not the keyword of the new. My question uh, from the syntax and also the example, uh, I, I try to uh, related for that, but you know, I confuse uh, number five and number four. You have to give an example, uh, int and float. And also, based on the syntax, uh, number three, uh, 13 and 14. 
so uh, how to you know uh, you... for the first example and the second 13 and 14 and 5 and 6 so uh, do you want to say that you want to store at something at index 5 and 6 uh, I have a question to Pritam, uh, maybe uh, the same to him. Um, that uh, my confusion here is uh, uh, not line number five and six, we have given that number five, line line number five and number six, we got that one. And again, uh, what is the relation, relation between? No, no, there's no, two? no, yes, yes. Line, line number five and six, don't have any relation, right? I can just go ahead and delete this. So I just showing okay. that these things you had okay. like already studied, right? That these are primitive data types. So when you want a single variable to hold some value, you can create this. You are already doing these things, right? In earlier exercise, it has got no relation to the below thing. I'll just delete this so that you are not confused. Is it better okay. now? Uh, okay, now that, it's good. Yeah. That is a question, yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank there's, you. there's nothing relation between that. So you can focus on this below this. Is, is this clear or not? Whatever I've taught about arrays. It's clear. It's clear to me, uh, neither, sir. Okay, sure. Fine. So similarly, you can go ahead and create like other uh, arrays as well. Double array. Say you want to specify a size of five here. So basically you can, uh, there's one way where you can like specify Double array zero is equal to say two point four double array one equal to three point zero. So similarly, I go ahead and print double array index of one. What is it supposed to print? It should print 3.0, right? Any confusion you have? It will print 3.0. Now let me go ahead and try to print double array of index four. So see, when I create an array of size five, it will go from index zero to four because there are five elements and it is the index is zero based so it will be zero one two three four got it so let me try to print out this value of double array four what is what will this hold any guesses what will this hold will it hold zero or will it hold zero point zero zero or zero point zero let me try to run this did you see this has a value of zero point zero why because the default value of double is decimal right it's like uh, if you don't assign anything to a double variable it will be like zero point zero Got it? So similarly, if I go ahead and try to now print double array of five, what do you think it will print? That's zero. Why will, uh, who said that? Why yeah, will that, Freddy? Uh, why Freddy, why will this print zero? Oh, we don't assign that one. So, is this zero or zero point zero? Okay. 
let me try to run this mm -hmm. you got some error right here in run time you got some error right okay did you see array uh, exception in thread main array index bound out of bounds exception why because i am repeating this this is index this index is zero based since we created an array of size 5 so the indexes can be only referred from 0 1 2 3 4 i think we have already covered five indexes until then right so index 5 will you cannot try to access something which that will be like out of size suppose you have like four chairs right you have like four chairs and i have placed like four of you in those chairs four of you are like sitting on the chair and i'm trying to like print something like what is in chair five there, there's nothing in chair five right so that is the thing means basically when you are declaring something of array of size five you can only access till index minus one so basically if you want to access something at index zero you place at index uh, you provide like array then index zero and then you can print that so basically it is like it will be so the indexes would vary from index varies from zero to array length minus one you're getting this so this will throw you a runtime error we'll see what runtime error is but this will throw you something some error for now you can consider this this is a runtime error so you are basically trying to access something something out of size means we have you you have created an array of just size and you are trying to access the sixth position means index five position got it any confusion here at line number 27 anyone has any confusion it's clear it's clear right because 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Already five indexes are done. So, and you have created an array of just size 5. So, if you try to access something beyond that, you will get an exception. And that will be like array. See, the error also you can see here, right? This error is something meaningful. This is called exception. In Java, you don't say this as error you will say this this as exception when you go uh, in further classes right where we will study exception handling you get to know like more about it but if you see this error exception in thread main array index out of bounds exception array index out of bounds means we are trying to access an array beyond the length of the array so the length of the array was just 5 and you are trying to like access some element uh, access something which is beyond the length so that will throw you an error also one thing access let's print out the size of array let's print out size of array so size of double array so there is something called double array dot length so if you write something like this you can get the size of this double array so what is it supposed to print it is supposed to print a value of 5 yeah because we have specified the size of double array so this is supposed to print you 5. Let me try to run this. See. Okay. One second. We'll just 
comment out this because this was throwing when this line threw you some error it did not print this one so i have commented out that one see size of double array is 5 because we have already specified the size of the array here right now let me go ahead and try to see another so it is you can print the size of an array by this syntax reference variable dot length so this length will basically give you the size of the array reference variable dot length let me try to go ahead and show you another another way of like accessing uh, means uh, storing variables another way of uh, creating array i would say you can also create something like float float array now i don't i'm not specifying i'm not creating it like with the help of the new keyword i just want to go ahead and like store some value so i would uh, just go ahead and provide 1.0 f 2.0 f 3.0 f 4.0 f 5.0 f you can also do something like this means here you have not used the new keyword here you have not used the you have not specified anything like new data type and the size of the array you have simply created a float this is similar like this syntax is basically similar you have used data type this uh, square brackets and then the reference variable is equal to and you have simply like assigned some values to this array so you can basically print like this as well and what you can basically do you can go ahead and now print the size of this float array so this will also give you five float array dot length see size okay sorry sorry size of float array size of float array is also five because we have like assigned five values in this float array 1.0 f 2.0 f 3.0 f 4.0 f 5.0 f now if i want to like print all the elements if i want to print all the elements i don't want to like print one element at a time means i don't want to like hard code this in the print statement like System dot out dot print ln double array one or two. I want to like just use a simple print statement so that I can print all the contents of the array. Print the entire array. So can you suggest me what basically I can do here? I just want to use a simple uh, print statement and try to like print everything what basically i can do here you know that you can use this particular syntax to get the size of the array right can mm -hmm. we use a can we use a for loop to run to print the si uh, to print all the elements print the entire array let me try to like create a for loop you are already aware with this for loop, right? We have seen this. We have seen a lot of examples for for loop. So let yes, me. Yes. Yeah. So anti i equal to zero. So this is like we are trying to st start with accessing the zeroth index, zeroth index of the array. And how long do we need to go? We need to basically go. Five. Yeah. So 
float array dot length so float float array dot length what will this give me this will give me a value of 5 everyone agreeing yes yeah yeah float array dot length will give me a value of 5 and when i is less than equal to less than 5 so i less than 5 basically means it will go until index 4 only because it is not equal to it is less than 5 so less than mm -hmm. 5 means i equal to 0 i equal to 1 i equal to 2 i equal to 3 and i equal to 4 getting it not included 5 okay yeah not included 5 we have because we have not provided an equal to we have like provided less than 5 so it would be oh. until 4 so let me try to go ahead and print the contents value at index value at index i is equal to float array what i'm basically doing instead of like hard coding the index as we have seen here like we were hard coding the indexes here what i'm trying to do i'm trying to use this particular loop variable so this loop variable when i use so first time when the loop runs i'm using an index zero so what will this print this will print value at index zero is equal to one dot zero f then what happens now i increments to two sorry i increments to one and then we are using again we are checking the condition so the condition will be true and again we'll go ahead and print value at index one and we will try to use one now this i will be basically one so it will print 2.0f let me try to print this example see you can see these things right value at index 0 is equal to 1.0 value at index 1 is 2.0 value at index 2 is 3.0 so we are basically printing this array we are basically printing this array here and with the help of a single print statement is it clear for everyone float array dot length basically gave, gave me the size of the array so this size of the array was like float array dot length gave me five and we are running a loop less than five so basically five will not be included so the loop will run from i equal to zero to i equal to four and then we'll go ahead and print value at index means each time we are trying to like print the value of the yeah. index and the index will basically vary from zero to four so we are able to like get our uh, output any confusion here this was like very straightforward you can simply create an array of like boolean character or a double string as well we'll see more about strings in later classes but this is like straightforward there is nothing so much here see we have seen two ways of like creating an array as and assigning values the first is like we basically create something like this means we declare an array and basically we specify the size of the array create an array using the new keyword like data type square brackets reference variable is equal to new keyword and then data type and then again size and then you basically assign values to all the indexes or whichever index you basically want to assign the values and what happens when you create something like this you don't need to use the new keyword and you don't need to again basically provide the size of the array you can simply uh, declare something like this and start assigning the values like this got it 
Any yeah, any doubts here? Okay. We'll go ahead and see something like this. So see, in this slide, basically we are seeing the same thing. Integer. Okay, one second. So this you have seen this syntax, right? Integer square brackets integer array is equal to new and five. So five is basically the size of the array. So see, when we say something like new integer five, it is basically a kind of object. And this int array, int array is what? Int array is basically a reference. This is basically a reference to your object. Means we'll study more about how these objects and references, where are these stored, means that's, something in the memory management means when you create something like this right when you create something like int uh, int array equal to new int basically when you create an array it requires some memory it requires some memory right so that memory is managed so how the me how the memory is managed basically i'll teach you something like these objects will be stored on heap these references variables will be stored or the local variables will be stored on stack. We'll go ahead and see these things. But this we have already seen. Int array is basically your reference here. Int array is basically your reference. A new int5, this is basically the object that we created. And this reference is pointing to this. Let's go ahead and see another slide. See. Java objects can never be named. Handle to them is a reference variable. So how we basically handle the object. So when we create something like new int5, we use this reference. So int array is basically the reference. We'll use this reference to basically access the arrays. So handling the arrays will be through the, the reference variable, all the references that we created. So, so see, similarly, string s equal to something like this. So here, what is s? s is basically the reference. s is basically the reference to this value. Got it? So what is basically an array? An array is an ordered collection of elements. What is an ordered collection? Ordered collection means it uses basically indexes. And indexes basically vary in increasing order so elements of an array can be of primitive type or references to objects so we have seen how we basically create arrays of primitive types now so anti means integer flow double care boolean you, you can you can like create these arrays right the arrays are also objects in java so this we have already seen so when we use this new int, basically this creates an basically that creates an object. So the array, arrays are also objects in Java. The above declaration of an array is actually creating an unnamed array object with the size of five integer elements. The handle to refer to this object is the reference variable int array. We have already seen these things in the demo. Uh, so I'm moving forward. So see, now default values in array initialization. So we had seen this while we were basically uh, going through the data types, right? So what's, what is the default value of each data type? It is Boolean, oh, one second. For Boolean, this is false. For care, this is Unicode 0000. zero, zero, zero. For byte, sort, int, long, this is 0. For float, this is 0. 0.0f. Double, this is 0. Object reference equal to null. So if you don't assign any values, this we had already seen, right? If you don't assign any value, suppose we did not assign anything to double array index 2. So that will hold the default value. So whatever default, default value double has. So default value which double has is 0. 0.0. So that will be the value which will be held by the array index. Got it? So 
Java assigns a default value to all elements of a newly created array if no initial value is specified. Got it? Java does not assign any default value to local variables in a method, constructor, or static initializers. We'll see this point later when we uh, study more about methods or constructors. So I'll teach you how we basically create methods in Java, how we basically create constructors or static initializers. So we'll go ahead and see this. So see, we had seen the first array declaration. When you see this array declaration here, right? We, we had seen the first syntax, right? We had seen the first syntax where we had like declared an integer array of size five and we had allocated some values. Uh, we had assigned some values to each index. Now, what is this second? You are seeing this two square brackets here, right? Are you able to see these two square brackets? Yes. Yeah. So what basically this two square brackets mean? So this means that this is basically an array of arrays. An array of arrays means suppose you have one array of four, you have another array of four, then again another array of four and an another array of four. So basically your single array contains four different arrays and all the arrays are of size four. So I'll try to demonstrate this with an example. So 2D array. So what basically 2D array is? So 1D array you have seen, like 1D array is basically one d array is basically something we are like passing value one comma value two comma value three and dot 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 value n right everyone with me mm -hmm. so this is what we have already seen now what two d array is basically 2D array is like something something like this means you see one array here you see another array here then you see another array here and then again, you see another array here. And then you see a pair of curly brackets here, right? The opening curly brackets and the closing curly bracket, right? So this is basically an array of arrays. When I, this is the opening bracket, this is the closing bracket. So this is an array and this contains many arrays, right? So this basically contains many arrays. So it is basically your 2D array, or you can say an array of arrays. So I'll show you how we basically go ahead and create that as well. So see, length of an array, this we had already seen how we compute the length of an array. That is by dot length, means array reference dot length. Whatever reference variable you have created for array, if you do a dot length for that, you will get the length of the array. So here, basically it is reference. This reference is pointing to the array object. And see, there are like, when I, when we create an array of size five, there are basically five boxes in this, in this array object, right? One, two, three, four, five. And the first one is at index zero. The second one is at index one, and then at index two, then at index three, then at index four. We have already seen this in the demo. So let's move forward. This also we have already seen array initialization until days in month. So here we are basically using some variable to store the days in month. So say 
January has like 31 days, Feb has 28 days, and then March has 31 days. So we are basically trying to store the days in a month in an array. So this is this we have already seen. Array initialization method like this. So see how it is picto how the pictorial representation shows. This is a 1D array and the reference. What is the reference here? Days in months is basically the reference here. And we have created an array object and how we are storing in continuous blocks. How we are storing these values in blocks. So it's like 31 is at index 0, 28 is at index 1, 31 again at index 2, and so on. So this is how the arrays are uh, array contains the values. The, an array object is basically storing the values at continuous memory locations. Let's move forward. So see, this is the memory map. So we have seen like how we basically create a uh, float array, how we basically create a double array, integer array. So similarly, you can create a string array as well. So when I say string array, you the syntax will again be a string. So string is basically used to store your string values. String values means a sequence of characters. When I say string, I basically mean you can say something like a word means something of like a sequence of characters. More than one character is a string. When I say more than one character, it is basically a string. So your string can also contain some decimal values as well along with this means it can be like alphanumeric, numeric, something like that. So east, west, north, south. These are like separate words and we are creating a string array of four. So if you like print the length of this Jones dot length, so it will basically print a value of four. So just see this 1D array. We have an array object. And in these four blocks, in these four blocks, we are basically storing north, east, south, and west. And what is the reference here? The reference is basically zones. So this is basically the reference. So this is similar to what we have already seen for float and double. So here just string is basically storing your string values. So whatever type of data type you provide, that type of value you have to store in the array. Otherwise, you will get a compile time error. See, now there is something arrays of array. And what I mean by arrays of array, let me try to show this with an example. So here you can see that there's an array created and then there was okay let me first show you how we basically created 2d array i did not show you the demo right i have shown you in the slide but not here so we'll create an 2d array Okay, 
بص يا Did you see some error here at line number? This is throwing me some error. Can you tell me why this is throwing some error? See, when I write this syntax at line number 44, right? Was this very clear uh, carefully? This is important. When I write something like anti uh, square brackets square brackets and then the reference variable new integer then four and then three so what this basically means so new integer we are basically specifying the size here right by using four and three so what this four and three means so four basically means that there are four individual arrays there are four individual arrays and what this three means is each array can contain only three values. Each array can have a size of maximum three. So it cannot hold like more than three values. So when I basically do matrix of zero comma uh, zero zero. So zero zero is basically we are trying to access this array, right? We are trying to access this array, the first array zero is when we say an array, it is like zero index based, right? So we are trying to access this index. And when I say zero, zero, we are basically referring to this value, this value. When I say zero, one, we are basically referring to this value. When I say zero, two, we are basically referring to this value. But since we had limited each array to contain only three elements, since we had uh, restricted an array to contain only three elements, I can go ahead and like store this zero three. But when I will print this, I'll get something like this array index out of bounds exception. Why? Because the each individual array, each individual array can basically contain only three elements. But I was trying to like store at index store an index at the means the fourth element i was trying to store in a array in an array of size three so that's why we got an error are you getting this so if i go ahead and print Something like zero comma zero, and then zero comma one, z sorry zero one and zero two. Let me try to print this. So this will basically print you the values. See. Okay. Let me comment this out. Okay, I think we were throwing some exception from above as well. Okay. See, we are getting the values, right? You can see this output 0, 1, 2. What we printed here. We had printed whatever we had stored here. 
at index 0 0 0 1 0 2 so we had printed the same is it clear to everyone Uh, not to me, I'm sorry. Okay, who is this? Gasho. Yeah, okay, so uh, please let me know what your confusion is. Uh, to the, uh, you know, uh, so we have uh, a matrix and a zero uh, for zero index, which is uh, printed to zero. For the index zero, and the it is a value one, the second. Uh, all right so let me explain once more let me explain once more you were clear with 1d array yes you are clear with 1d array so basically we are placing so when i write something like new int 4 3 so suppose say this 1d array I, i'd like created suppose say i've created a 1D array of 1 comma 2 comma 3. This is 1D array. You are agreeing with this? Yes. Yeah. So you are agreeing with this. You are agreeing with this. Then you have another 1D array of 4, 5, 6. Agreed? Mm -hmm. You have another 1D array of 7, 8, 9. Agreed? These are yes, like in individual arrays. And then you have another 1D array of this. So this is one 1D array. This is another 1D array. This is another 1D array. And this is another 1D array. Agreed? Uh -huh, yes, I agree. Yeah. So now what we basically do, when we create a 2D array, so this is an array syntax. What we are basically doing, we are basically going ahead. So when I go ahead in this 2D array, this is at index 0. This is at index 0. So when I say 0, 0, when I say 0, 0, it basically refers to. So this is our first array in a, uh, this is our first array in a 2D array, right? So I'll tell you what basically how I stored. So this is how I have stored this. One index OK. So this is how I have stored this. Index OK. So now you can see how from this 1D array we built this 2D arrays, right? Mm -hmm. So now this is our 2D array. This is our 2D array. Got it? Is this clear or not? This is our 2D array? Yes, I am clear. So all uh, values uh, holding by uh, open current reverse, yes? Not yeah, close. yeah. So there is another way how we can basically store the values. So I was basically like showing you for how each index we can like store the value. But let's go ahead and try to like store all the values all at once. So let me create a 2D array new new two dimensional array and what I'm basically doing I'm using the same syntax here 1 comma 2 comma 3 4 comma 5 comma 6 7 comma 8 comma 9 10 comma 11 comma 12 got it so let me go ahead and ask you some questions you have to tell me the output what this will print. When I say new two dimensional array, I want to basically print. Okay. One and two. Can you 
anyone here like tell me the output of this one z okay uh... see yes zero one two no no what will this print this particular statement what will this print see when i say new two dimensional array of index one so this entire array is at index zero agreed this entire index it's at index one this one. array this array is at index two and this array is at index three now each array as well has some indexes right each array as well has some indexes so just think of this one new two dimensional array one so when we say this new two dimensional array of one we basically are referring to the array at index one so we are basically when we first see this when we first go for new two dimensional array at index one we basically first Go ahead and select this one. And now we need to access the element at index 2 from this array. So what is at index 2? 4 is at index 0. One, uh, 5 is at index 1. 6 is at index 2. Yeah. Now is like Yeah, thank you, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Now is like so clear. This will basically print you 6. Yes, See, yes, yes. This has printed six. Are you clear now? Yeah, I'm clear. Thank you. Yeah. So this way we basically store. I need one more output from you all. What do you basically think this will print? Okay, uh, zero, one, two, three, okay, ten. Oh, sorry, eleven. Yeah, this will print eleven. eleven. See, see, this is zero, this is one, this is two, and this is three. So, this we are referring to this array, and then we are referring to index one. So, this is at index zero, this is at index one. So when one you go year. ahead and print this, you'll get 11, right? Yes, yes. OK, one more thing. What will this print? This uh, error. Yeah, this will print you an error why because we are trying to access an array at index 4 but we can only access 0 1 2 and then 3 so this line will basically throw me an exception exactly. and that exception will be array index out of bounds exception will go uh, means don't worry about the meaning of this array index out of bounds exception we'll study in detail when we study the topic exception handling but for now when i go ahead and run this we'll get an error see we got this error right array index out of bounds exception i will just comment out this one so this line will basically throw you an exception okay let's go to the slides okay there's another way of like declaring an array see now we had seen this 2d arrays where all the arrays had equal number of elements right so when we declared something like this four three so each element is sorry each array had equal number of elements that is three Got it? Now there are ways where we can create arrays which can have like different number of elements. So say this first array 
the array at index 0 suppose say has just one element this array has two elements this array has three elements means we can like have variable number of elements the number of elements in each individual array can vary so this is how this is what we basically have created here let me go ahead and create the same for you let's say pascal triangle we basically go ahead and create the same so see what this is basically doing is i'm creating one array and then in array of one i'm creating this four comma five Six comma seven comma eight, then one comma two. You can also create something like this. So now, if I go ahead and try to like print, when I print something like this, what will this print? Here are, I think, so for my answer. Anyone else has a different opinion? Let me try to run this. So this will get an uh, create an error. Why? Because at index zero, we have this array and this has got only one element and this element is at index zero. Got it? So this will be again the same reason index out of bounds exception and let's go ahead and print something different one comma one what will this print now five yes this will print you five got it why because the first array the array at index one is this one and we are trying to access the element at index one so element at index one is five got it so see this is how you can like declare this as well so when you go for this particular syntax right anti array d new array 2d so basically when we write five by five, what we basically mean is this has five individual arrays. This has five individual arrays. And you see that the second column, they have like kept it blank. This is blank right here. You are able to see this slide. See, we are like declaring this, right? Anti square bracket square brackets array 2D equal to new array 2D. And then the size of this is five. And the next square bracket is actually empty. So when the square bracket is basically empty, it means that you can have variable number of elements in this particular array. Means you can, you are not restricting this array to have the same number of elements. Like here in this 2D array, we basically restricted that an array can have, each individual an array can have a maximum of three elements only. But if I go ahead and remove this, if I go ahead and remove this, so we basically can assign any number of elements in that array. Got it? Okay. Uh, are you said you mean uh, we can assign any uh, element of numbers? So that which means? Yes, yes. So what this means is basically, can someone please mute themselves? Yeah. So what this basically means is we are creating an array of five. We are creating an array of five, but we are not restricting the size of each individual array. We are not restricting how much elements 
each individual array can contain so our first array can contain like five elements you can have like second array which can contain just two elements third array may contain just one element so that is it so you can do this by this syntax got it is it clear so can you come back to intelligence yes so, so it, from this yeah Okay. Okay. No remove. Okay. No remove three. Uh, example fifty two. Uh. Okay. Let me go ahead and remove this. The, output is the same. Output will still be same. Okay. Which where is this error coming from? Line number fifty four. Okay. One second. Uh. 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 Okay. Add error index. N T four. One second. One Okay, this is the same thing, right? Uh, new entities, array, new array 2D. Okay, one second, one second. Just give me a second. Okay, where is it?
ओके ओके वन सेकेंड सीरो Maybe I think uh, first we need to uh, nested the initialization. Uh, in one, one second, one second. I'll tell you like what we were doing. Okay, this needs to be done in this way. New anti three. Okay, now what we basically do is zero comma two equal to one. Let's try to print this. Okay, great. Yeah. So see, this variable, one thing was like, we can declare this in this manner, right? Declare and initialize the value as it is. But when you go ahead with this particular syntax, right? This particular syntax, what you can basically do is you can declare an array and then you have specified the dimension means when you specify something like this like this dimension you mean that you can have a maximum of four you can you, you have like four arrays you have like four arrays and you want each array to be of a different length you want each array to be of a different length so what you basically do is you basically leave this particular uh, the size of you do not restrict the size of the inner arrays so now when you want to basically create an array so suppose the first array you want to create is of size 3 so you created one array of size 3 and you allocated some values to it and you printed this now what you will basically do let's do the same for a second array let's create second array of l size one so we basically go ahead and five so zero not zero this is like one zero and this is one zero what do you think line 80 will print will this print five we have created another array so this is yeah. the array yeah. this is the yeah. array we are speaking about so this is yeah. the array that we have created so this will this has a size restriction of just one so we are trying to access the zeroth index of that particular sub array and we are assigning a value of five and we are printing this here so basically when i go ahead this will print me a value of 5. Got it? So this syntax is basically useful when you want to create variable number of elements in your sub arrays. So you have array of arrays means you have a number of arrays in your uh, uh, single array and each array has a different size. So all the arrays has different size. So you can try to like use this as well. Let's go to the slide. Okay. So this we have already seen. This uh, uh, way of representing a 2D array we have already seen. And this is how it is uh, created in the memory. So we have an array object and we have like two boxes. The first box refers to your first array. The second box refers to your second array and this is like containing the element one two three this is containing elements four five six and then there is this reference so what is this reference this mat variable is the reference which is pointing to the array object so now see what do you mean by like objects 
and local variables so see anything that you create so you you have seen like how we basically create an array so an array is basically an object so how these are basically managed in uh, how these are basically managed in memory is basically this arrays or objects will be uh, stored on heaps and the local variables all these local variables local variables means whatever variables have the scope to just a method so this is the main method right public static void main so we have like int x string s s equal to abc so the scope of these variables is only within these blocks so if you try to like access this x outside of this main method you will get an error why because the scope or lifetime of this particular local variable is just within this blocks got it so these are basically stored on stack so whatever local variables that we have suppose we have the local variable as s this will be basically stored on a stack and whatever objects that we have what do you mean by object here when we say an array object suppose new int 15 this is an arrow array object so this was stored on heap got it so all objects and arrays will be stored on heap and all uh, local variables will be stored on stack okay someone is saying that can you please repeat when you allocate 2d from 1d array uh, tj uh, can you like clarify your question hello tj you there when you allocate 2d from 1d array i did not get your question hello i'm not sure if you're able to you might be on mute okay let's the last array allocation okay so the last array allocation is basically see we had created an array where we wanted to have the inner arrays of different sizes so we basically went ahead and created something like this this is new int four so we can have a basic uh, so we can have like four arrays four inner arrays and each array can be basically of a different size so now that we want to like allocate the size to the first array means the size at the index zero the whatever array is at index zero is the first array right so we basically went ahead and created it of size three now the array of at index one we basically created of size one and we allocated some value to this we allocated some value to this so array at index zero has a size of three has a max size of three and at index two we are assigning the value of one so we are going ahead and printing this now again the array at index one array at index one has a size of one and we are accessing that array index one the array at index one and the first element is assigned a value of five so we are tr trying to print that so your first array is of size three your second array is basically of size one you're getting this is it clear now return from this uh which uh which are uh, allocated for the size 
you know, seven cherry, uh, we have a new in uh, four size, and also uh, the second. Uh, can you uh, means uh, can you specify which line you are speaking, yes, sir? Uh, from here, seventy three, and okay. seventy four. Yeah. See, when I created a where array, new int four, and then I left this blank. What this blank means is that the inner arrays means so when we create a 2d array you understand that we have an array of arrays right means your array mm -hmm, yeah. can contain multiple arrays and yeah when when i leave this blank i mean that our inner arrays can be of different sizes agreeing agreeing with that yes i agree yeah okay now the array at index zero so how many arrays can we have we can have one array at index zero we can have one array at index one we can have one array at index two and one array at index three agreed until now yes zero until yes up to three. yes so at array index zero at uh, whatever now we are like specifying that our array at index zero should be of size three now we are assigning a size to the array at index zero and similarly here at line number 78 the array at index one is restricted now to a size of one so basically it would be something like this your first array this array can have a max element of three your second array this one can have a max element of one. Why? Because we are restricting the size now. Is it clear okay. now? The return, the return value is restricted by. Uh... Sorry. So the return value restricted uh, based on the restricted. Yes. Now we are restricting the size here. Now it's like I'll uh, write down the entire thing. Then you will understand. Okay, I'll just restrict it to two. So we have like, uh, uh, we have created an array which contains two arrays. Clear with this? Yeah, the first statement is I'm clear. First statement, you're clear. So line number 74, are you clear or not? Yeah, uh, my question is from this. Okay, let, let me let me give you the entire thing. Because Zero. why we give two restrict? Because uh, three indicates the size and as well the two is uh, the size. Okay, the wait first a second. Statement two is the size. And wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. Zero comma two. This is a one. This is a two. And then you're assigning a value of two. So when I write these statements, right? So initially when I wrote this statement, what this basically means is, this basically means something like this. Something like this is created. When I'm done until this, what this basically means that I'm doing something like this. When I'm done with this line, I'm basically telling that I have something like this in my array. Are you clear now or not? Is it clear now? Now, our inner arrays, see, 
this line is basically restricting the size of the array at index 0 to 3. So, and we are allocating these values at index 0 of first array contains 0, array uh, at index 1 we are storing 1. So, this is at index 1. At index 2 of the 0th index array, we are basically storing 2. And similarly, here this has like a size of max 2. So, here we are basically storing 4 at index 0 and at index 1 we are basically storing 5. Is it clear now? Yes, very completely. Yeah. TJ, is your concern clear? You have any questions? Not sure if uh, you got it right. Okay. Okay. So we'll go ahead with the slide. So this memory management we have seen, like local variables will be stored on stack, and whatever objects we uh, store will store it on uh, heaps. We'll study more about this when we study about memory management in Java. So for now, whatever local variables that you have within a method, whatever variables you have, like this variable X, like this variable S, these are like your local variables. Understand that these local variables are basically stored on a stack. And whatever objects that you have, object by object, I mean that whatever you create with this new keyword, new int15. So this needs some kind of memory, right? So this memory will be basically stored on heaps. So if they ask you where, how the memory is getting managed for local variables, you will say the answer that local variables are basically stored on stack. And how, where the Java objects are basically stored, you will say that Java objects are basically stored on heaps okay there's one more thing i wanted to show you okay so we had seen how we basically go ahead and print the array right how we basically go ahead and print the array so there is another way of like see I'm not going into this slide reading line by line because it will be more clearer when I show you basically the demo. So it will be like more, when you see more hands on, it will be like more clearer. So there is an enhanced for loop. Enhanced for loop. So what we mean by how is it useful this enhanced for loop is basically Let's see, I'm creating a array. I'm creating a 1D array and I'm allocating some values like numbers like 2, 3, 4, 5. Now you have seen that you were able to like create that for loop and then after the creating that for loop, you were basically able to print all the elements, right? For int i equal to 0, i less than array dot length, i plus plus and then system dot out dot print an array of i everyone was able to print that right means you are clear that how we basically do this here this is what i'm talking about you are clear with this right now what we can basically do is we know that each element of this array is of integer data type means what are these values these are integer values right one two three four five so now I want to print this. So there is another syntax for int. You can write int z and so let me int value and then just specify the array name here. Just specify the array name here. And then what you basically do Just print the value. Just print the value. So see, 
whatever element we are accessing from this array this is basically an integer uh, integer value right so this is a syntax for anti value you can this is kind of a variable this is a variable followed by colon and then the array reference array reference and each element you can just print with the help of this particular local variable now for this value so let me print each value you're able to see this is also printing me one two three four five right is this clear now this is very straightforward actually you don't need to like specify the array dot length and all those things you can still go ahead and print this this way as well so this is called enhanced for loop so this enhanced for loop will it will be like using more and more now you can like access arrays and then we'll go in further classes where we study about collections collections in java there you will use this enhanced for loop to a great extent so this is clear right the syntax is very simple means i just used for loop and i don't have to uh, specify the array dot length or i plus plus here we just need to provide some reference uh, some uh, variable name followed by colon and then this particular array reference here and then each time we print this value is it clear now another thing is we had seen how we basically created 2d array right let's say we have a 2d array 1 comma 2 comma 3 4 comma 5 comma 6 7 comma 8 comma 9 so if you want to print this using a for loop so what basically you can do is see oh mistake see this is our output how we basically printed a 2d array so we are using again the enhanced for loop see this numbers in 2d array this numbers in 2d array basically contain an array of arrays right it contains an array of arrays so when i use this when i try to first extract this what it will basically give it will give me a 1d array right so from this 2d array first i'm getting this 1d array first i'm getting this 1d array right and then what basically i'm doing i'm trying to get this i'm from this 1d array 
reference i am trying to get each, each integer value and then basically i am printing this printing this x and for changing the line after printing one of the one d arrays i am basically i am basically printing a line change statement print ln so it basically prints me like this alternatively this was the initial way which you could have done for anti i equal to 0 i less than alternate way i less than numbers in 2d array dot length and for anti j equal to 0 j less than numbers in 2d array 0 dot length j plus plus system dot out dot print numbers in 2d array i j and then See, this also prints you the same thing, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So what we basically did here was anti i equal to 0, i less than numbers in 2d array dot length. So when we say numbers in 2d array dot length, it will give me a length of 3, i plus plus. When I do 4 anti j uh, equal to 0, j less than numbers in 2d array 0 dot length so when we say numbers in 2d array 0 dot length when we say numbers in 2d array 0 this we basically refer to this right and when we say dot length basically this will also give me a length of 3 now what we are basically doing we are going ahead and printing the element at ij so we are first printing this one then we are printing basically this then we are printing this and then this condition becomes false we are uh, going ahead and changing the line and then we are basically going ahead incrementing i for second line for this array again we are printing four five six then this condition becomes false again it goes the control goes to the outer loop i is incremented to 2 and then we are basically again uh, printing uh, for i equal to 2 we are printing i equal to 2 uh, and j's value varies from 0 to 2 so we are basically printing 7 and then 8 and then 9 so this is one way of printing 2d array this is another way of printing 2d array this so this the uh, the one which i am highlighting this is a cleaner approach you don't have to write this much of code you can simply go ahead with this and print a 2d array is it clear any questions anyone Any questions, anyone? Or should we move ahead? I'll take that 
you all have understood and you don't have any questions so i'll move forward uh, i will try uh, this by myself and uh, if i got questions i will ask you next uh, next um, class Please. sure sure but uh, you have understood the concept what i am teaching right you yes, might need yes. you, you might need some practice but you have understood right how i am basically explaining this yep yeah okay okay fine so this was basically about arrays we'll go ahead with our next topic that is classes and objects so what basically classes and objects in java are so objects by objects we basically mean the real world entities so every real world entity that we have real world models that we basically refer to as object suppose we say car so car is basically an object right and each object will have some states each object will have some attributes and each object will have some behaviors so car has a car has some weight right a car has some color so these are kind of states and attributes and what are the behaviors so behaviors of a car is basically like car can be driven car has gears car has accelerator right so these are kind of behaviors means the functionalities so car is basically a real world object and it has some states means a car has some color it has some weight and so on and it has some behavior as well by behavior i mean that it has some um some functionality and those functionalities are like it has accelerator you can like uh raise the speed of your vehicle and then you can apply brakes for that particular car right so those are kind of like behaviors so these real world real world entities are basically called as objects and what is basically a class a class is basically a way or a blueprint or a template to create this real world objects a class is basically a template or a way to create this real world objects so we have already been seeing these things right when we created this class this was basically a class this is basically a class we'll go ahead with some real world examples how we basically see how, what we basically mean by classes and object but understanding this concept is very important this is one of the most important topics in java in core java so objects are basically your real world entities when i say the real world entities it's basically car you can say a library you can say a school these are basically your objects or real world entities and it has some behaviors those are basically like a car has some behavior then uh, a student has some behavior and so on and then there's a way to like create these objects so that is basically called a tem uh, te that template is basically called a class so we'll see see classes and objects so basically see this is a bank suppose this is a bank and in bank bank has a different functionalities you can like withdraw money from a bank you can deposit money in a bank you can get your current balance so these are some of the behaviors of a bank right and when i think of bank what state or attributes that i can think of bank has money right so money is like a state or attribute of a bank in bank you have like money right in bank you have currency so those are kind of attributes or states so those are states uh, and then what are the behaviors of a bank what functionalities does a bank have from a bank you can like withdraw money you can deposit money you can get your current balances so these are basically the behaviors of a bank 
so in java basically the behaviors the behaviors are implemented in a method the behaviors are basically implemented in a method and whatever states and attributes that we have whatever states or attributes that we have those are basically represented by instance variables we'll see how we basically when we create a class how we basically represent your instance variables and how we basically create a method so see creating a class we have already seen these things when we created that main method we were able to create this class right when we go ahead and create that new java class we we were able to create this class but see here what they are basically doing we are creating a class bank account and then this anti id float current balance string name so these are basically basically the states or attributes these are basically the states or attributes this id current balance and name id current balance and name these are also called as instance variables instance variables are non static variables so you can name id current balance and name these are called instance variables or non static variables and see in this bank account we can basically deposit the money we can withdraw the money so we are using this attributes the attributes like amount or uh, the attributes like current balance so these are the things we are using to basically change the state of your attribute suppose you add some amount in your current balance that is deposit right you have some current balance suppose you have an initial current balance of 100 rupees you added like 50 more rupees amount to your uh, balance so now what you have current balance plus equal to amount so this statement also means that current balance equal to current balance plus amount right so 100 plus 50 so now your current balance increases to 150 now what you do you have like void withdraw float amount so current balance minus equal to amount say you have like withdrawn 20 rupees so when you withdraw 20 rupees from 150 you basically withdrawing 20 rupees so what is the remaining that you have you have 130 rupees got it so this is basically a simple class which basically shows some attributes and some behaviors so this void deposit right void deposit is basically a method this is a method void withdraw is also a method what what we basically mean by void void means that it this method does not return me anything void means no return type void void is something like empty no return type so before this deposit is basically the name of the method float amount so this method basically takes an input parameter an input parameter of which type of float data type so this is the this is basically the parameter which this method is taking and what we are basically doing we are altering we are changing the state of this attribute so initial current balance was 0 initial current balance was 0 float current balance equal to 0 right so whatever amount that we add suppose we added 100 rupees so current balance becomes to 100 rupees got it any confusion until now in this simple example do you have any questions sorry guess so your voice is not very clear can you please speak oh, okay, okay yeah yeah from void uh we use both of void deposit and uh void withdraw okay so yeah when we use plus and minus uh, uh, i'm clear but uh i confused for why we uh, use uh void uh on deposit because when we uh add that means uh, we can see it sorry when you see 
when you deposit anything you when you go in the bank and deposit your balance in the bank increases right and when you withdraw from your bank your balance whatever current balance you had that will reduce right so yes. that is that is why when we are depositing we are doing uh, for, to your current balance we are increasing means suppose you had like deposited 100 rupees this amt this is the value of this amt is supposed say 100 rupees so your current balance now became 0 plus 100 100 rupees so that is deposit now when you are using withdraw you are basically withdrawing yes, I, the I am clear. I am clear for the yeah just moment. just why uh, when uh, why we use uh, void yeah on so so every method see this void deposit float amount right this is a method so this is a signature of a method signature or syntax of a method i'll teach you that so this void means no return type means when you call this method right it won't return anything to you means suppose you wanted to return current balance i will show this with an example void for now understand this this void means no return type means this method will not return you anything any value void means empty return value and deposit is basically the name of this method if we want to like call this method we'll basically call with the name of this method we'll see more when we basically create an example for this Okay, I think Admaso is uh, Admaso. One second, we'll just see a simple example, and then we'll stop the. Uh, we'll just see a simple example, and then we'll stop here. I'll just take five minutes. See. So see, we have this bank, and then I have created one anti ID string string name, and then float current balance. Equal to zero point zero F. Now what I'm basically doing? Void deposit, and I'm taking some amount. So when I do this, what I'm basically doing? Current balance equal to current balance plus amount and void withdraw float amount current balance is equal to current balance minus amount And I'm creating an object of this class. And how basically I create an object? I use the class name. And then I use some kind of reference. Bank. New. Bank. So. Bank. Dot deposit. So let me provide some value.
bank dot current balance and then i withdraw some amount suppose i am withdrawing 20 rupees from here bank dot and so we'll conclude with this example just follow for two more minutes here so what we're basically doing i have one id one string name so i have not used this as of now but focus on this current balance the initial current balance was like 0, 0.0 f means your balance your account did not have any balance and you created two two methods void deposit so this is like void means no return type So current balance equal to current balance plus amount. So withdraw current balance equal to current balance minus amount. And then how we basically create an object. This is the syntax creating an object. So we basically use this syntax. Class name, whatever class we, we have. We need to specify that you can use some reference variable equal here is equal to new. This new operator will be used. Remember, we used this new operator for creating objects. And then now we'll again use this class name followed by this parenthesis. And now that you have this reference variable, you can use this reference variable to access your instance variable. You can use your reference variable to call these methods to perform any operation. So this is one method which performs deposit operation. This is one method which performs the withdrawal operation. So let me go ahead and just run this program. See. Your initial balance was 0, 0.0 F, right? So when you deposited some amount, bank dot deposit 100 F. So what happened? Your current balance, which was zero, incremented to 100 rupees. We are printing it here, right? So this is 100 rupees. Now again, we went ahead and withdraw like 20 rupees. Bank dot withdraw. So we are basically calling the withdraw method. So 20 rupees is now withdrawn. So the remaining amount is basically bank dot current balance. So from 100 rupees, 20 rupees is withdrawn. So basically you are left with 80 rupees. So this is a very simple example to show that you basically are using methods so this is basically a method one second method to deposit amount method to withdraw amount so this is basically a method to withdraw amount this is basically a method to deposit amount anyone has any confusions or queries okay we'll also go ahead and see one more thing what is the difference between void and return so I'm just providing INT. Uh, get current balance. And what I will basically do, I will just write return, return current balance. So re uh, one second. OK, this is float. So. See,
Now this method basically returns some value. This method basically returns some value. If you call this get current balance, right? If you call this get current balance, you can basically get your current balance. So I'll go ahead and call this get current balance. Let me try to run this. So this is the current balance. So let me current balance. So this is basically your current balance. Everyone able to follow this? This method is basically returning you a float value. And these methods, withdraw and deposit, are not returning any value to you. You are basically you were basically accessing it with the help of this instance variable earlier. So these are basically ID ID name and current balance are basically these are instance or non static variables. Everyone is clear until now. If you don't have any questions, we can conclude this here. Hello. Okay, so I'll stop the class here. If you have any questions, you can let me know. Or uh, we will resume the class again at the same time tomorrow. If Do you have any queries? I need to amount is equal to? Sorry? No, no, it is not a question. Just when I, I try to type it, it shows exception. Art uh, line. When, uh, yeah, uh, amount. Uh, what exception are you getting? For example, uh, tari bank dot withdrawal. Tari number tari three zero. Okay, bank dot withdraw. What is amount for my? This is twenty dot zero f right. No, Since no, no. I'm amount amount is a call now. No, no, no. Said, um... no, no, no. This amount you don't have to type basically. So this is the suggestion. Means you just have to type 20.0f. This amount will automatically come. Means it's kind of like giving you a suggestion like what exactly this is. This is amount. You don't have to type amount column. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Got, got it? You, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, you, you just have to like uh, uh, type the numerical value. This one, this one. So that is the suggestion your editor shows. So this is fine, right? See, this bank is a class and this has basically this attributes like ID, name and current balance. I did not use ID and name. We can see, we can like extend this tomorrow. But what we are basically doing, this current balance is holding an initial value of 0 0.0f, means it was not having any values. And these are the methods for depositing and withdrawing the amounts. So you can deposit any amount by adding your current balance and the amount to be deposited. And then you can withdraw any amount by deducting the amount from your current balance. And then there is a method 
to get your current balance so return keyword basically returns you the value from this method if you want to return any value from any method you will use this return keyword so i'll write it down return keyword returns the value from a method so this basically this method basically gets you a current balance and i'm using the float data type because current balance is of type float right so we are expecting a float value so i'm using the data type float so see the signature of this method this is data type this is name of the method and see the name uh, case uh, what case i'm basically using i'm using camel casing means first word will be small and then the second word will have its first letter as capital and then the third letter i will again have the first letter as capital and then what you are, i'm basically doing i'm creating an object here and with the help of the i'm this is the reference this is basically the reference with the help of this reference you will be basically calling all your methods and this when i say this bank dot deposit this method is basically called and this requires some parameter right it requires some float value so that is why i have given this float value here some amount and after that some amount got deposited in my current balance so i am printing with this reference value variable dot current balance so that will basically print me the current balance similarly i have done it for withdraw method as well and i am printing current balance and then this method basically gets me the current balance so this was a simple exercise which basically shows how we can create an object how we can create in class how we basically create methods how we basically create instance variables are you clear until now okay i'll stop this class here we'll resume the class again tomorrow at the same time thanks everyone thank you pritam thank you yeah thank you